Imagine being born with a heart defect that did not present itself until adulthood only because your developing heart in utero did not need to carry oxygen-rich blood to your lungs. However, with your first breath of life, the heart must suddenly close off this opening between the two chambers in order for your lungs to begin the process of delivering oxygen to your body. 10% of all congenital heart disease is caused when the atria does not close properly. This is referred to as an atrial septal defect or a patent foramen ovale. Ask the Specialist was on location in Midland, Michigan with Dr. Greg Pelizon, who explains the differences between these conditions. Um, the difference between an ASD or atrial septal defect and a PFO or patent foramen ovale is the septum between the atria in, in utero grows from the top and the bottom and they come up together and actually seal the chambers and separate the chambers. With an atrial septal defect, the, uh, the, the tissues start growing and then they stop. So then there's this persistent hole between the, the, between the atria and the heart and allows blood to flow back and forth. The PFO, actually, the, the tissues have grown and completely grown over, which is normal, but they have a valve effect, so it lets the blood coming back from placenta to go through, and then when, it, when it's done shunting, it closes. So it opens and closes. Symptoms associated with these conditions can vary. Most people will live normal lives and not know a defect exists. However, some will experience fatigue, shortness of breath, migraine, and even stroke, depending on the size of the hole. The way the PFO works is that the theory is that a blood clot from the legs that's small travels up through the veins up into the heart and then instead of getting filtered by the lung travels through this hole and goes into the systemic circulation and it can go anywhere in the body. It can go to your hands, your feet, your organs and you may or may not know that but when it goes to your brain you know it immediately. Robert Wants suffered with this condition that affected his daily life. It took several years and visits to physicians to diagnose and treat his problem. I first found out I had this problem when I had sepsis out in, um, in Minneapolis. And they were trying to find out what kind of uh, problems I had had, what the sepsis had done to me. And the guy put this thing down my throat and said, you know, you have a hole in your heart. And I had not known that. And he said, uh, yeah, you're probably born with it. And um, I would thought no more about it until I was having trouble getting my blood oxygen over 88. Uh, I have oxygen at home. I uh, walk around the house with oxygen. I have sleep apnea where I have the oxygen. And everybody said, OK, you're going to feel wonderful. In the morning, you're going to take this put this mask on and uh, in the morning you're going to have all that oxygen in you and you're going to feel wonderful. And I feel lousy when I get up and I fought with that mask all night. So I, I, uh, I went to see a Dr. Damoth who's the uh, pulmonary specialist in, in this area and uh, he couldn't figure out why I was there because he had done a pulmonary function test on me and he said your lungs are as good as mine. The only other thing I can think of is perhaps the oxygen is being lost somewhere near your heart. And it was like he hit me on the head with a hammer. I said, you mean a hole in my heart? And he said, yeah. I said, I've got one of those. And he said, well, how do you know? I said, because they told me out of Minnesota I have a hole in my heart. And I thought, here, I, I, just been validated. I've got a hole in my heart. <laughs> I was happy about that for some stupid reason. After his visit to the pulmonologist, Mr. Wants was referred to Dr. Greg Pelizon, an interventional cardiologist skilled in the technique of non-invasive ASD and PFO closure. Well, I went to see Dr. Pelizon, and he took some tests that had been done. He looked, he said, yeah, you've got a hole. It's about the size, about the half inch in size. He said, we can fix that. And uh, there I am. Using intracardiac echocardiography and fluoroscopy imaging, Dr. Pelizon is able to access the heart via a catheter placed in the femoral artery to gain access to the atrial septal defect. 
Using a balloon device on his catheter, he will measure the size of the hole and select the nickel titanium closure device precise enough to straddle both sides of the atria. Once the device is deployed, the catheter is removed and scar tissue begins to form around the device, sealing this hole permanently. Okay, that looks good. The device actually holds on to that tissue so it doesn't migrate. Total time for this procedure is one hour, and most patients go home the following day with a lot to look forward to. Yes, I am anxious to get back to one of my normal things, and I, for the first time, this morning they were taking my blood oxygen, and it was 95. I have, have never seen 95. When I had 95, from 88 to 95, now I think maybe I'll be able to remember things that I wasn't able to remember because I have oxygen flowing up there I didn't have before. And perhaps I'll be able to, to act differently. I have triplet grandchildren and my span for, for having them around is, has shortened up tremendously. And I think perhaps I can, can better tolerate them and tolerate life, really. For more information on cardiology and Dr. Greg Pelazon, visit askthespecialist.tv.